Bicycle touring in Canada goes back to the late 19th century. When as early as 1890, 70 hotels from Manitoba to the Maritime Provinces began to offer reduced rates for cyclists. In 1901, Carl Creelman of Truro, Nova Scotia, became the first Canadian to cycle around the world, a tour that took him two years. Another well-known Canadian bicycle tourist was Harrison Randall, who traveled over 28,000 kilometers across North America during the Second World War. Dubbed Canada's Cycling Serenader, he played the piano in more than 900 communities along the way. Despite its place in Canadian history, bicycle tourism has yet to truly take off in North America. Among those who have even heard of this form of recreation, there is often an attitude of apprehension. Bicycle tourism is perceived to be too intense for the average individual, and most people do not give it a second thought. It is true that a bicycle tour requires great dedication and perseverance. Nonetheless, bicycle tourism is far from unattainable for the average person. There are four important steps to getting ready for a bicycle tour. Getting fit, planning your tour, taking care of your bike, and packing your panniers. With the proper commitment and preparation, you too can experience the benefits and adventure associated with touring Canada propelled by nothing but your own two legs. The most important form of preparation for a bicycle tour is physical training. While it is easy to be intimidated by the level of fitness required, it is important to note that tours can be adapted for individual skill levels. Cyclists pace themselves, and when they plan their trip, they can choose a daily mileage that is appropriate for them. Moreover, as cyclists train for their trip, their physical fitness and cycling abilities will of course increase. Cycling is great exercise, and with the proper determination, any reasonably healthy adult can reach a skill level adequate to take a bicycle tour. Of course, like any other sport, cycling requires a great deal of practice. As you prepare for your adventure, you should be riding regularly, ideally every day. Whenever possible, Make your rides one and a half times as long as the distance you plan to travel daily on your tour. This will help to increase your endurance for when you are carrying a load and tired from many days of riding. You should be able to ride these long distances without experiencing specific muscle pains or saddle sores. If you do find yourself falling victim to chronic pain, this may be an indication that you need to adjust the fit of your bike. Ensure that you are occasionally training with the same conditions that you will experience on the road. Ride alone if you plan on taking a solitary tour. Carry the right amount of weight in your panniers. This will help to prepare you both physically and mentally for your journey. As you gain strength, you will also develop safer biking skills and have a chance to hone your pedaling technique. This will help you to become a safer and more efficient cyclist. With the amount of energy you'll be expending as you train for and embark on your tour, you will also need to pay attention to your eating habits. Dietitians of Canada recommends that endurance athletes consume meals rich in protein and carbohydrates after exercising. Some examples of suitable post-ride meals would include pasta and meat sauce with salad, vegetarian chili with raw vegetables and potato, and chicken with vegetables and rice. These meals will help you to replace the glucose, glycogen, and protein that you used for energy over the course of your ride, helping you to stay healthy as you get fit. There are many different kinds of bicycle tours, but one key distinction to be made pertains to accommodation. In general, bicycle tours are divided into what are called credit card and self-contained touring. Credit card touring involves staying in hostels, motels, and other lodgings, whereas self-contained touring involves camping. Both of their advantages and disadvantages, and you may well have to consider incorporating a combination of the two types of accommodation into your experience. Credit card touring does not require cyclists to carry as much on their bikes, allowing for greater distances traveled in one day. It can thus allow for harder cycling than self-contained touring. Additionally, staying in a hostel or motel presents conveniences such as a shower, a bed, potable water, and likely a proximity to food. Self-contained touring, meanwhile, can offer a unique outdoors experience. It is generally cheaper, although at times can be more difficult to plan particularly in areas where there are no official campsites. In this case, many cyclists engage in what is termed stealth camping, a practice defined by one blogger as camping overnight on land that is unmarked, without anyone's consent or knowledge, using the leave-no-trace principles.
Other considerations for the type of bicycle tour you would like to embark upon include whether you would prefer to travel alone, with friends, or with an organized group. If you do choose to travel with others, there is the potential for a sag wagon to come along with you. A van or truck in which you can store your gear and which you and your companions take turns driving. There are also a wide variety of organizations across Canada that coordinate large bicycle tours of various distances, lengths and time and styles. As such, there is great freedom to choose whatever form of tour appeals to you. Another consideration before you embark on your tour is the upkeep and security of your bicycle. The degree of bicycle knowledge required on a bicycle tour varies greatly depending on the company you plan to keep and your expected proximity to a bike mechanic. Regardless, it would be advisable before embarking on any cycling trip to know how to patch or change a tire. You should also travel with the Allen wrenches required to tighten the basic connectors on your bike and the tools necessary to remove your gear cluster from the free hub. Your local bike store will be an invaluable resource as you get to know your bike before embarking on your tour. Ask the staff about the tools necessary for your specific bicycle and have them show you how to carry out basic maintenance. You should also invest in a good lock. A U-lock would be the most secure, but you should consider traveling with a cable lock as well, in case the U-lock is not long or flexible enough to secure your bike. A cable lock can be used in tandem with a U-lock to discourage theft and secure the bicycle's various pieces. There are many valuable online resources offering comprehensive packing lists for prospective bike tourists. There is not room here to go into any detail, but the most important consideration when packing for a bicycle tour is to keep your load as light as possible. The necessity of every item must be critically evaluated to ensure that you are being weighed down no more than absolutely necessary. A common way to carry provisions on a bicycle is through the use of panniers. These are generally arranged so that there is one set on the front of the bicycle and one on the back. Make sure that you distribute the weight carefully, with at least half going onto the front wheel, since the back wheel already carries most of your weight. With panniers, the most important consideration is the volume. While the extra mass will only come into play when you accelerate, the drag from a large pannier will be working against you at all times. Having prepared your body, planned your tour, learned how to take care of your bike and packed your panniers, you are finally ready to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Sure, it took some preparation, and okay, the daily rides weren't always easy, but now you're fit, bike-savvy, and ready to experience Canada in a whole new way.